God desires His will to be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Find out about how supernatural government can make that happen. Welcome to The Miraculous Life. I'm Steve Hannett, I'm your host, and I'm excited to talk about heaven on earth today. We're going to be talking about supernatural government. That may be a new phrase to many of you, but you'll understand it as we go into the program, that God has a government in heaven, and He's looking for those principles. He's looking for those precepts. He's looking for things to happen on the earth, and He's looking for the right kinds of people to do it. Today I've got an amazing guest. He's not only a pastor, but he's a New York City councilman, and he's been involved in the political arena for many years. God has been using him powerfully, and he's had to navigate through the issues that are heavenly and that are earthly. He's here today to talk to us about how to reconcile those two worlds, and more than that, how to actually bring God's will in heaven to the earth. I'd like to introduce Fernando Cabrera. God bless you. It's good to have you. Thank you so much. So we're talking about this idea of supernatural government. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is heaven. Mm. And there's this idea that God is a governor. He's a leader, but he's Lord. And we hear this idea, mm. well, Jesus is Lord, uh, the Lordship of, of Christ. But talk with us, because the Bible describes that there's a throne mm. in heaven, mm. and that that throne is established in righteousness. Mm. And many times on earth, I think people are like, you know, what's the right thing to do? Talk with us, what does this throne look like, and how is this idea of a throne so important to understanding government? You know, the, the kingdom of God exists because there is a king and that king is sovereign. Mm. He holds providence in his hand. Nothing escapes him, which brings us a sense of security. And that's what true yeah. government should bring to people. Mm. It should bring a, a sense of security because you know that someone is in charge. Right. And, and when you look at the book of Revelation, before it gets, to, uh, it gets into all the uh, events, uh, we are taken, John is taken uh, to see how God is ultimately in charge of everything. And everything is coming under the Lordship of Jesus. All of history mm -hmm. is moving to come under the authority of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 15 says that one day, everything that comes under the authority of Jesus will be passed on unto the Father. Mm. So... Uh, that perspective should affect how we see mm. government here on earth because mm. what we have here is just but a shadow of what is taking place in heaven. This idea of authority, uh, when you're speaking about the authority of God in government, you use this word uh, of safety, mm. security, mm. this idea of protected environment. But I don't think a lot of people think of government that way. Mm. Um, but the lordship of God would bring that government because he's governing from a place of righteousness. And this is yeah. why so many people, if I could be so raw today, so many people have such a bad view of politics and government. Yeah. And the reason why is because there are so many times people who get in, get in with the wrong motives. Mm -hmm. But we have a king who not only has the right motive, he rules with righteousness. He's, yeah. He does it right every single time. And mm. he has good government. And we, sh we ought to look to him as the model on yeah. how to rule here on earth. You, you know, I, I, I think a lot of people, especially in the, the political environments today, mm. there are many people who are saying that they're righteous. 
mm. that they're the right way. Follow us, follow us. We'll give you what you want. One of the big differences from my view is that though he's king of kings, though he's Lord of lords, though the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 28 that all authority has been given to Jesus Christ in heaven and the earth, mm. we find that he's not moved with self-interest. Mm. He's moved with an agape, right? Greek for that unconditional love to serve the people. And he came to die for us. Mm. And that's one of the biggest differences, I think. So when you're speaking about this wrong motive, it's not necessarily, therefore, that government is bad. Mm. It's the motivations behind some of the leaders in government that we have felt oppression. And, and this is why character is so important in us choosing who's going to be our leaders. Yeah who are gonna govern, because they have a tremendous amount of power, but power tends to magnify mm -hmm. what's inside of us. So if you mm -hmm. have someone who, who got in it because they wanna serve, they wanna, they wanna add value to people, they wanna be able to see justice take place, they wanna see the poor not mm -hmm. only taken care of, but empowered so they could come out of their situation, when the heart, the, it's a matter of the heart. Mm. Uh, and this is why I think it's so important for us, for us Christians to get involved mm -hmm. in, in government because we have experienced a transformation mm. of the heart and we have a heart revolution mm. that took place and that's gonna have an impact in how we govern. Yeah, so you're, 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 you're speaking about this idea that when we have been saved, we've been made new. I want you to make sure you never forget about this. And uh, even go ahead, I'm gonna give you some homework today to study 1 Corinthians chapter five. This idea that all things have become new, a new heart, a new mind. Mm. And so Paul was saying in his ministry that he was an ambassador as if God was pleading through him mm. to the people. Would you say that serving in politics in the earth is the same as being an ambassador of the heart of the Father? You know, absolutely, as a Christian, um, and I had the personal experience of clashing with different principles and worldviews. Mm. But my experience has been that the kingdom principles are superior principles. The principles of love and kindness and caring mm. and, and being able to, to have order, to have public safety, to see people having the greatest opportunity to have opportunities. Mm. And all of those come from kingdom principle. And this is why I think mm -hmm. America in the first 200 plus years had such a surge in power and influence around the world because it was founded in Judeo-Christian principles right from mm -hmm. the beginning. So many of, of the signers of the mm -hmm. Constitution were Christian, yeah. one of them was a pastor, uh, and they understood this Judeo-Christian values make a huge difference. And I, we, mm -hmm. we are ambassadors, we are represented. When mm -hmm. I go to City Hall, I know, I always tell people, I answer to a higher authority. Mm -hmm. You may want to put me and to drag me with these views, but ultimately I have to answer to the God of heaven mm -hmm. because he gave me the opportunity to be there to bring mm -hmm. transformation in our community. And let me give you a case in point so people can see mm -hmm. principle into reality. My district, when I got in there, had the worst unemployment in the entire city of New York. 23, mm. 23.5% mm. of my people were uh, unemployed. We had crime that was totally out of control. Kids were not graduating. 11 years later, what do we find? From 23.5 to 5.7. Wow. We saw crime being reduced 66%. Wow. We were, I was able to start with another council with the Cure Violence Program that is the best gun violence prevention program in the nation right now. Wow. We have invested $27 million into that. And I had two high school and one of them has a 99% graduation rate wow. in the boogie down Bronx, <laughs> okay? So we, we see what could happen and 
if you have the type of leadership and influence to bring about transformation in a community. See, I love what you're saying because sometimes I think people look at the Bible and say, well, that's church stuff. Right. I've got real problems in my life. Mm. And they say, well, you know, we, we need practical solutions. But what you're saying is from the time the government was founded in these Judeo-Christian principles that they're still working, they're still able to be applied, but how they look may be very different from land to land, culture to culture, mm. but they're timeless. Yes. They're God's plans mm. and they bring practical help. This is very different from what people think about, I think, government and church, that they think there's some separation between the two. Which is ironic. If you look at the Bible, there are more people mentioned by name that were involved in government than pastors. <laughs> yes. And, and they're called shepherds. Yeah. They, uh, uh, we see Romans chapter 12, uh, in, in ch chapter 13, how we are to honor those in government because they are servants. That's right. They're ministers. The King That's James right. called a minister to the right. servants. So they're there to serve. And I would love to see, Pastor, one of my heart's desire is to see more Christians involved. We need to separate this idea, get away from this idea that there's a separation of our spirituality with the world. Every aspect of what we do, everything that we do is spiritual. Mm. Whether I eat or drink, the Bible says. Yeah. Whether I'm in government right. and I'm in the city council in an oversight hearing mm -hmm. regarding young people. Whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. Because ultimately, we're doing it for the king of all the kings, mm. the king of glory. You know what I love in Matthew chapter 28 in uh, the Great Commission, mm. when Jesus gives that. A lot of people think, he, he said, you know, to just 12 go. But the language in Greek actually says, as you go, mm. as you live your life, yes. be, be the witnesses, be the salt mm. and the light of the earth. I, I wanna tell you right now, maybe you're listening to Councilman Fernando. Maybe you're thinking, my goodness, I have felt a call on my life. Maybe you're the kind of person that says, I want to see change. I know that the, the principles of God's word which he has exalted above his name, the Bible says, mm -hmm. work. You can begin to pray into that. You can begin to pray and say, you know, I don't have to run away from government. I can run to it. I can be a spokesperson. I can be a, a, a tool in the master's hands mm. at this hour. And I, I think what's, what's wonderful is that we're not looking, and, and I, I work with some great Christian businessmen, but some of them are Christian first, mm. then they're businessmen. Yes. And there are politicians who are first sons and daughters of God, who like you mm. are answering to God and to the authority and have shedded the fear of man. Mm. And I believe when you do that, you're gonna find destiny. You're gonna tap into things that God has called you to do. And you're gonna find that God wants to send good shepherds Indeed. We were talking a little bit about Ezekiel chapter 34. Mm. And uh, I can understand why a lot of people would want to rebel against government. I can understand it. I don't agree with it. But I can understand it mm. because when the government isn't doing what God ordained a government to do, it needs to change. It Indeed. needs to be reformed. Indeed. Indeed. And God was looking at the government of his own people in Ezekiel 34, right? Mm. And, and I wanna read uh, something here that, that, I, that I find interesting. It, it says in Ezekiel chapter 34, uh, verse number one and two, it says, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, prophesy against mm. the shepherds of Israel. And you mentioned this earlier, that there's this idea of a shepherding of a people. Talk with us. What was God upset with? Mm. Because I think a lot of us will say, wait a minute, we're upset with the same things. We agree with God. Wait, there's yeah. a government I could actually lay hold of. Exactly. Yeah. I think that uh, what the people are looking for 
often is what God is looking for. They're looking for someone who's going to get in there and is going to literally serve the people. Uh, what's inside of you is going to leak out in everything you do in government. Mm. And what we see in Ezekiel 34, we saw shepherds that were only leaders who were supposed to care for the people and they were mm -hmm. self-serving. And we have seen that in government. That's why we had lost credibility in government. And that's why integrity matters, character matters. Mm. And this is why we need a new generation of young people yeah. and uh, third generation, I call them, yeah. uh, Christian seniors and of all ages to come in there with character and to be able to say, I'm here to serve because let me tell you, people are hurting. Yeah. Right now, what we're going through right now, we need leaders who are going to be pillars, mm -hmm. who are going to be thinking about the people who are not going to serve themselves and they're going to say, I'm going to add to you. One of the things that yeah. also, that level of leadership, and you as a pastor, you know this, is judgment calls. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things that we do as elected official is to have judgment. Mm -hmm. But just like Daniel, mm -hmm. just like Joseph, uh, Daniel, one of the greatest prophets, as a matter of fact, one of the few prophets in the Bible that I find that nothing bad is said about him. <laughs> and yet he was in government. <laughs> yes. But he needed the Lord so bad yes. that he needed to pray three times a day. And, and he was in an ungodly yes. situation. So my, I mean, he was, they, they, yeah. Yeah, they threw him in the lion's yeah. den. Yeah. And, in, and in politics, you're going to get that level of betrayal. You're going to have people with jealousy. But I have learned, and I can tell you this, mm. that God is faithful to the faithful. Amen. And if you're faithful in government, you're doing the work of God, God will have your back. I've been in situations where I told the Lord, what's coming against me is bigger than the political power that I have right now. Mm. But you are the king. You are Amen. in charge. And then let me tell you, in every single case, God has come through. And it, I'm still standing. You know, the idea is that um, when Joshua, right, uh, before he went into the promised land and led the people, right? We know mm -hmm. that he encountered what the Bible calls the angel of the Lord, the captain of the armies of God, right? right. And he asked an interesting question. He said, are you for us or are you against us? Mm -hmm. and the angel of the Lord, who I believe is a theophany of Jesus, right. said no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he said, no, I am for God. And go. I think it's one of the most powerful things mm. for any leader, any servant, whether pastor, the, uh, the, 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 the Christian administration, the political administration, whoever you may be, mm. to say, I am neither for this side or that side on the earth. Mm. I am for the Lord. And I believe when we are for Him, mm. He can now say, now I'll be behind you. There you go. Because you're with me. And I believe that that's happened. And that's the testimony that you're sharing with us. Mm. That says, well, because I'm, I, I'm serving a king and I'm, I'm administrating or administering, which is a type of ministry. Yes. When you administrate the values of God. The people wind up becoming blessed. And God says, I'm behind that. I, I can be for that. And you, you know, and the great thing about, and you were mentioning it earlier, one of the, there's such a vacuum uh, in terms of the presence of Christians in, uh, in the political realm, that whenever they find you mm. and they go through hell, mm. because government is not an easy thing. It is very grinding. It, it takes a lot out of you. Mm. Um, but when they see somebody with hope, they see somebody who's connected with the Lord, people will gravitate to that. So mm -hmm. we need to have the light of, of, of the presence of Jesus. And everywhere I go, whether, I don't care where I'm at, whether I've been to the White House, mm -hmm. whether I am in City Hall, whether I'm in the streets, uh, what I have learned is I'm a carrier of the presence of oh, the man. King. And that could have such a great effect and, and, and affect those around who are thirsty and be, still be able to be that representative. I will say this, you got to be grounded. Mm. You have to be grounded because of all the political pressures and values. Mm -hmm. In some, certain places, very easy to be a Christian. In certain places, it's not 
easy to be a Christian yes. in that political environment. So you have to be grounded in there mm. so you can withstand all the pressures that, that come your way. I think about Moses as you're speaking. Mm. God said to him, you go ahead and feed my flock, shepherd my flock. Yes. And I think about that as a pastor. Mm. And I guess whether we're shepherding people in the context of a congregation or we're doing that in a city or a nation, there's this idea that says these people are not mine. Mm. That's so true. These sheep, these uh, constituents as they would call them, these voters are not mine. They don't belong to me. And I think that that's such a powerful thing for me as a leader, which I have felt protects me from overstepping mm -hmm. my perceived level of what I think I should do. There you go. But rather, I'll feel the Spirit of God, remember, you're taking care of mm. someone else's child. Mm. That's you're so taking good. care of someone else's son, daughter. And I think that that empowers me mm. to say when people are putting pressure upon me to not preach boldly, to not say the thing that may offend somebody, is to say, no, I have instructions and I'm leading someone to someone else. There you go. I'm not leading them to myself. So mm. that, that has empowered me and helped me. And I agree with you because going back to the idea of character and groundedness, we have to develop the, the foundation of the believer. And, and I wanna be bold, and I know you understand this, but I, I wanna tell you, if, if you're thinking about going into politics, um, you need pastors in your life. Yes. You need discipleship in your life. You need to understand the way the kingdom of heaven works mm. so that you'll be able to stand and having done all to stand mm. in that evil day that Paul was speaking about. And, and there are those evil days. There are those experiences we go through and that you've tasted in the political arena, mm. that you need to be strong. You, your, your colors have to be known uh, and you can't, you can't be in between. And I believe that's when greater respect uh, comes because I, I tell people at times, well, you may not agree with me, right. and that's okay, but at least you'll know me. Yes, and you need a mentor. If you're gonna get into politics, you need a mentor. Mm. And a pastor could be, because you have government in church. Yeah. You have government in marriage. People say, oh, I don't want to get involved. In, in, but you, yes. Look at marriage. You got a lot of politics going on. You have government. And so, but you need a mentor in your life. Mm. And I couldn't think of a better person than a pastor to mentor someone, yeah. to help them to get into politics. Amen. We have a few minutes left. I, I, I want to just have you share a little bit. Um, and I'm going to have you pray at the end mm -hmm. for those people who may even be called uh, to government. Um, but I, I'd like you to talk to the idea of what do you think has been the most difficult thing that you've had to deal with being primarily a Christian mm. who finds himself as an ambassador for another king in the positions that you've been in, ones of influence and ones of power? Well, that's a loaded question. Uh, I think is the absence of other believers mm. in the political arena. When I got to City Hall, I remember I saw lobbyists from every type of group, but I didn't see Christians. Mm. I don't see them at the, the hearings. I just, I don't see their presence. And mm. I think that we, we that, that's been one of the, and also the level of support. I see how in the other side, they support their candidates and I see and when a Christian runs, it's like cricket, cricket. Yeah, so right. that's, that's, that's been tough. So that's a testimony for the need. Yes. That we need to respond to the call of God to Absolutely. be in those arenas. Indeed. Um, Fernando, I would love to have you pray mm -hmm. for those people who have heard this conversation and say, my goodness, I would love to run. Uh, maybe it's in their own municipality, locally. Maybe it's something that's more ambitious, but they need encouragement. Would you pray? We just have a minute. Would you pray Absolutely. for them? Father, I thank you 
for the opportunity to share here today with my friend, Pastor Steve. But I pray right now for everyone who's feeling a burden like Nehemiah felt that burden for the city, a brokenness, Lord, that they'll be able to translate that. Lord, they'll be able to translate it into action. Lord, lead them. Create that path. May they follow the yes, river Lord. of purpose in their lives, Lord. Mm-hmm. Raise them up, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. I want to make an appeal to you that if you are interested in running for office and you'd like prayer, I'd like you to reach out to us at contact at everyhousenow.org because we'd like to at least pray for you and we have relationships that may prove worthwhile to you to be able to get started. I also want to urge you to pray for all those who are in government. God has not called us to be a lawless people. He has called us to be a people that are on our knees in front of his throne to pray for our leaders, especially when you don't agree with them. That love, respect, and honor of authority would be found in every one of our homes. Let's teach our children that God is a God of order and a God of grace. We pray that you've been blessed today. We look forward to hearing from you. Amen. God bless. My name is Steve Hannett, and I'm the founder of Every House, the ministry that produces the miraculous life. I'd like today to talk with you about prayerfully becoming a financial partner with our ministry to get the word of God out to the nations. You know, we've got an amazing team that's dedicated to seeing lives change. Many people don't know that when they're becoming a financial partner, that they're literally joining the work with us and literally becoming part of the family to produce fruit in the nations. Now, we understand that your tithes belong to your local church, and we encourage you to be faithful to your local congregation. So we also understand that there are offerings that you can invest in ministries like Every House to help support the work that we're doing. Simply go to everyhousenow.org, click the Give button, and you'll be presented with a series of options of how to partner with us. God bless you, and we thank you in advance for your love. We pray you've been blessed by The Miraculous Life and know the Lord Jesus desires His best in your life. The Miraculous Life is a production of Every House, a missions ministry focused on releasing the power of God, establishing strong churches, and developing sound leaders who advance the kingdom of God. Your love gift to Every House is tax deductible in accordance with the law. We believe your tithes belong to your local church and your donations to our ministry are received as offerings for the advancement of the Great Commission.